Now, besides oil spills and gangs, Nigerians are also plagued by poverty, corruption, and poor leadership. In a recent interview with the governor of the Ondo state of Nigeria, Dr. Oleshegun Mimiko, he talked about Nigeria's struggle to transform for the better. As we build enduring democracy, that we must continue, we must begin to move away from very mundane personality issues to the critical issues that affect the people. You know, when you listen to African politicians across the continent, uh, many times uh, uh, the conclusions that are reached is that these people are so petty, that they perpetuate those ethnic divisions and uh, take advantage of whatever uh, differences are there. And now, what do you think really is the motivation? Because those leaders, most of these leaders are very smart people, they're very highly educated yeah, I mean, people. There's a substructure of ignorance. In most cases, people are actually not concerned because many years of misrule has created this disconnect actually between the people and the government. Um, so a lot of the politicians are just talking to themselves. Nigeria is associated with big problems, uh, namely corruption, poor governance, poverty, lack of infrastructure. Where do you, would you say Nigeria is today when you look back and compare 10 years ago? For me, the 10 years of democracy, uninterrupted democracy in Nigeria, is a major achievement. So as we move and clean up the electoral process, I believe that the process will now throw up the right leaders of the people. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest challenge of development for me is to be able to sustain democratic governance to clean up the electoral process so that it will be credible, so that people can owe their mandate to the people in a very, very organized and predictable way. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the system will throw up the right leaders who are accountable to the people that will engender the type of development that we should be having in Africa. Are you, are you seeing, uh, noticing, uh, like an, uh, the emergence of uh, a new crop of leadership that is really committed uh, to the building of institutions that will ensure that Nigeria is a really functioning democracy, that Nigeria can effectively uh, fight um, vices like corruption and propel the country into higher levels of development. There is no question about the fact that more and more young and new generation of leaders are getting excited about, about, about trying their hand getting involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about creating institutions and processes that will address the worst fears of people, mm -hmm. an equitable, a fair and just society, which will necessarily come on stream once you can sustain the democratic ethos. So all of this, will, and I know that things are changing even in Nigeria. There's more involvement by civil society, people are more concerned about what the president or the politician is talking about. People are seeing the connect between good government and their everyday socioeconomic well-being. What is critical and is important is for us to sustain democracy. And I think as we clean it up, the system will throw up yes. the right leaders and the society itself will be more engaged in the process. But uh, Governor, you know, Nigeria, just like uh, many African countries, and I've traveled and I've spoken with so many yeah. uh, people across the continent, particularly when you talk to the youth, you, you sense uh, that feeling of um, lack of trust in leadership yeah. and, that's, and a feeling of hopelessness. That's why we have all these thousands of young people just trying to get out of the country, trying to go to Europe, some risking their lives. Uh, and when you talk to them, one thing they tell you is that the leadership in Nigeria are kind of as personalized and locked off the people uh, from the means of survival. Uh, which, which in a case like in Nigeria, you find becomes mostly the government. Hmm. Uh, now, how do you restore that faith in the youth and make the youth in Ondo State, for example, say, I don't need to even go to Abuja or, or Lagos. I can make a living here. It's about sustained democracy, and I'll tell you what I mean. Um, I came on board in 2009. There was a palpable disconnect between the people and government. The distrust was deep. Um, I came on board with um, um, a minority party 
in four months, I was able to run on that platform and won election, governorship election. Four years on now, I can tell you that the average Yundu state person, we talk about government in terms of we, they feel part of government. Why? Because we have used the instrumentality of government to address the everyday concern of our people. Okay, I am here in an invitation of the Center for Strategic and International Studies to make a presentation of our Safe Motherhood Program, which is virtually revolutionizing maternal mortality concerning Nigeria. So the average Nigerian Undo State woman and young one, they associate with this because it's an everyday thing with them. It's an everyday thing with them. If a mother is pregnant and the government places a mechanism that allows that woman to be tracked from pregnancy, from conception to delivery, all expenses paid by government. If a woman needs cesarean section surgery, he walks into the hospital, is performed free of charge in a world-class environment by top physicians. There's no way such people will not begin to see government in new light. And that is what we are trying to do. Well, that was Dr. Oleshegun Mimiko, the governor of the Ondo State of Nigeria, talking to us on In Focus.